Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. The Philadelphia Eagles won the battle in the trenches and thus the battle of 2-0 teams on Monday Night Football. Also, the Cincinnati Bengals are on the board for the first win of the season. And are the New York Jets making a move for Kirk Cousins? I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. The Philadelphia Eagles seem to be very much of the mind. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Run the ball, run the ball, maybe throw the ball to A.J. Brown and then run the ball again. It seems to work a 25 to 11 handling of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Monday night football in, I guess, the appetizer of the, the Monday night doubleheader. I don't know. Uh, this Monday night doubleheader stuff is wild. Gino Camilleri from Locked On Eagles joins me now. And, and Gino, I mentioned this is the formula for Philadelphia. Turns out it still works. That's the thing. I mean, that's who they are. And the best thing that you can do is lean into what you do well. And also, I don't really know anything. I thought they were going to come into this game attacking the weakness of Tampa Bay, which is their secondary. Carlton Davis is out before the game even starts. Jamel Dean goes out. And then you're saying, oh, the Eagles once again, 10 X to their opponent on the ground when it came to running the ball versus defending the run. Yeah. And trench play is the formula for the Eagles. And that offensive line is so dominant. The thing that is just driving me insane, it's like that meme of the half-eaten plate of chicken wings with the Eagles offense, where it's like, yeah, it was probably good, but how many times did you kick a field goal when you should have scored in the red zone? Mm -hmm. How many times did you punt when you were over the 50 or close to the 50? That's the thing that I think we're all waiting for. But at the end of the day, when you have two back-to-back dominant performances, and I don't think this score will tell the whole detail of all three of these games that the Eagles played, they dominated on defense tonight. Their defensive line is going to continue to win them football games. Jalen Carter could win the defensive rookie of the year and potentially be an all pro candidate. Even with losing Avante Maddox, they were able to keep that secondary under wraps for the most part, keeping Mike Evans in check. And then the offense, once they figure it out, the sky is the limit. But if the floor is doing what they do now with the run game being so good, it's like having that one good club in your golf bag. If you can always go back to it, even if you can't putt, even if you can't drive, if you have a nice wedge in your bag, like a five wedge, go to it, you know, and that's what the Eagles run game is right now. It's my seven iron is my, is my, if my life depended on the club, I can, I know I can always hit my seven iron. The the run game I mentioned has been their bread and butter. It will continue to be their bread and butter. But Jalen Hurts through the year has not been, he's not taken that next step. And it's probably a mini step for him, right? The big step was two years ago to this past season when he became an MVP candidate. But two interceptions in this game was not as efficient as a runner as we're used to seeing him. What's your concern level there? Because if they're going to win the NFC again, They're going to have to beat some teams that can really score the ball, that can really play some good defense, trying to take away what you're best Mm -hmm. at. Jalen Hurts is going to have to make some plays. And that's the thing. As good as the run game is, if a team is able to take that deep, that weakness away or that strength away and make it a weakness, then then you're going to have to rely on the pass game. Yeah, no, 100%. And A.J. Brown had a great game tonight. It looks like they got Dallas Goddard involved a little more. They started to get into their bag a little bit in the second half when they figured out how to check out of a blitz and have a hot route, which is something that took two and a half games to develop. It is incredible. But Jalen Hurts, those two interceptions, I thought the first one, that's an easy miscommunication. He went one way on a leverage read when he was supposed to go the other. The second one, I think that's 100% a learning Lesson for Jalen Hurts, don't force it when you don't need to. Because the thing with Jalen is, especially with his running game, and I think that's a great story for who he is as a ball player, you have to do it out of necessity. That interception he threw, the second one, was that out of necessity? Absolutely not. You just pick up a big first down. You had another couple plays to try and live in the way you were running it. You are popping off like seven yards of pop on the ground. Live to see another day. But also contextualizing it, I thought he did some excellent things on back-to-back plays, looking like the Houdini MVP player that we saw delivering a gem to Alameda Zacchaeus for his only passing touchdown. 
put a ball in AJ Brown's bread basket in the end zone. And AJ Brown just decided to drop the ball. I don't know what it was, but <laughs> all in all, I think it's coming together slowly. That picture it, it's starting to take shape, but they have one half of what their offense needs to be. So the puzzle is almost there. I think defense is completely figured out where they are. We're going to win in the trenches. We're going to get to the quarterback time and time again, and that'll lead to a great secondary. They pick up another interception today. The offense, once they got that run game going, it's still on the passing game to close it out in the red zone. If they can hit home there, who knows how many 40, 50 point performances they could have by now. Stay up to date all year on the Philadelphia Eagles by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Eagles on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. The Bengals are on the board in 2023. Before we get to that, though, the Raiders might be without their quarterback. Love the convenience of getting what you want right to your door? With DoorDash Grocery Delivery, you can stock up for the week or order last-minute cravings conveniently. Need fresh groceries for the week but don't have the time to go to the store? Try Grocery Delivery from DoorDash. You'll get everything you want delivered when you need it right to your door with easy substitutions right in the app and best in class customer support doordash delivers groceries exactly how you want it get 50 percent off your first doordash order up to 20 dollars value when you use code locked at checkout limited time offer and terms apply don't forget that's code locked for 50 percent off your first order with doordash Las Vegas Raiders starting quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo's status up in the air against the L.A. Chargers after he entered concussion protocol following the team's loss on Sunday night to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Considering Devontae Adams' comments yesterday about not wanting to wait around, this is not a player the Raiders can afford to lose in a must-win game. In injury news of their own, the Los Angeles Chargers will be without receiver Mike Williams for the remainder of the season as he's been ruled out with a torn ACL. The team hopes rookie first-round pick Quentin Johnston can step up in his absence. The Toronto Raptors have emerged as a potential landing spot for Portland Trailblazer star Damian Lillard. The Miami Heat have been the team that Dame has said he wants to go to from the start. Also reportedly in the mix, the Milwaukee Bucks have some interest in pairing Dame with Giannis and Tedekumbo. And the New Orleans Saints have officially determined quarterback Derek Carr is now week to week with a sprained AC joint in his right arm, something we talked with Ross Jackson about yesterday on Locked on Sports Today. It wasn't pretty, but they did it. The Bengals got on the board with a win in the 2023 NFL season, a 19 to 16 slugfest. With the L.A. Rams, Joe Burrow played. That was the good news. The rest of the good news, um, maybe Jake Lisko from Locked on Bengals can can give me something here. Jake, they won. Uh, w- w- was there the good news? But I guess Jamar Chase. Are we only talking about the offensive side of the football? Okay, fair, fair. The defense looked good. The defense is good. Trey Henderson took over the game. Yeah. He had two sacks, I think, erased by penalty. He still had two sacks on the night and forced an interception by getting Matt Stafford off the spot and forcing him to do Matt Stafford things. You know the Matt Stafford play I'm talking about. Everyone yeah. who's ever watched Matt Stafford knows the Matt Stafford play <laughs> I'm talking about where he tries to create something, and sometimes it's spectacular. I am haunted still, of course, by the no-look throw in the Super sure. Bowl two years ago. This one, he tries to sidearm it, and Logan Wilson gets in there for a pick doesn't necessarily lead to anything of great import for the Bengals in this game. They don't necessarily capitalize on the opportunity, but the, the point is, is that Trey Henderson took over the game. I think Alaric Jackson, the, the starting left tackle for the Rams went down with an injury. And then for some reason, I mean, there's been a lot of praise for Sean McVay this year. I think deservedly so from what he's gotten out of this Rams team that wasn't expected to do anything this year left. I think his name's Zach Thomas, the backup left tackle for the Rams on an island with Trey Hendrickson for most of the game. And it might have lost him the game. I mean, there are some other things that were questionable, I think, from the Rams in this game. But Hendrickson absolutely took over. On the offensive side of the field, you're asking, are there other positives? Yeah, it was rough on offense, I think. But 
having seen Joe Burrow play in three games this year, including week one, when he was also still dealing with this injury to some degree, I expected this sort of limited offense. They opened it up a little bit in the second half. We saw some signs of life. Burrow threw the ball a ton considering that calf. Yeah, 49 it attempts in this game. Really concerns me that they didn't go to the run game despite knowing what they knew about Joe Burrow's limitations. Like he was not extending plays. They rolled him out of the pocket twice. They were both very controlled. They got an explosive out of it. That's great. Uh, he, he flushed out of the pocket once trying to get away from a sack and extend a play. Was a little bit gimpy after that play. I mean, the guy's clearly not 100%, right? And they're, they're constructing the offense around that where he's not taking chances. He's trying to get rid of the ball quickly. And he was kind of living in that world, but he's also floating balls to the sideline that he usually does not float. The, the ball sailing on him a little bit on throws to all parts of the field. So I, I think just clearly hampered by injury, and that's rough. But he said after the game that he did not worsen the injury. There was no setback in this game. That's a piece of good news. In addition to getting into the W column, I think in, in terms of order of importance, it's Joe Burrow not aggravating his injury win, and, and then some really nice things on the defensive side of the ball and for Jamar Chase in this game because those units, or that unit and that guy, Jamar Chase, balled out. Yeah, and, and I, I don't want to undersell the defense by any means. They had six sacks in this game, another five passes defended. They hit Stafford 10 times. Officially, you mentioned two of the sacks wiped out by penalty. This Bengals defense was, has, is good. One of the one of the lingering questions here, like I think all of us expect Joe Burrow to be Joe Burrow when he's healthy, if they can get him healthy at some point this season. T. Higgins, another one of those weird days, eight targets, just two catches for 21 yards. How can they get that connection going? Why does that seem to be the one that has suffered the most with Joe Burrow hurt? I mean, he was really good last week, T, in week two, catching sure. in breakers, taking the ball after the catch. He was very productive last week. It was Jamar Chase who was really the question, when are they going to get Jamar Chase going? But it is two games for T. Higgins now, eight targets against the Browns. He caught zero of them. I put that more on Burrow than T tonight. It was just not a good night for T. Higgins. Had a, a couple of tough drops. One of them, just a stone cold drop that would have been a first down, leads to a, an eventual punt, I believe. He had one go ball target, has a push off, gets called. He had an OPI to go with two or three drops. Maybe another ball that should have been caught that was, that was or could have been caught. You know, T. Higgins contested catch master that, that he didn't win the contested catch situation. Tonight I put on T. And he said as much after the game, he took to Twitter, said that he will be better. And I think he'll be better. I'm not worried long-term about either Joe Burrow or T Higgins. The concern is just, can Burrow get healthy? Because he, he the, the, the style of football they play tonight is not sustainable. It required a Herculean off uh, uh, Herculean effort from the defense. It required, a lot of 48, 49, 50 plus yard field goals from their kicker. They missed a field goal. They had a, a field goal go off the goalpost and in. Mm. That was the margin of victory in this game. They had a 2 2 Atwell touchdown ruled not a touchdown because on, on review, they said he stepped out. They got a sack after that. That's a four point swing. They, they get off the field there in the red zone. The Rams were like 0 for 10, 1 for 11 by the end of the game on third down. Oof. I mean, these are not ways that you can you can consistently win football games, forcing teams to have field goals in the red zone consistently, getting off the field on a lot of third and shorts, frankly, getting some some poor decision making from Sean McVay, living in this offense, it's so much quick game. It's just really, really difficult to live in that world as a football team. They have a lot of talent. That's I think why they're able to eke out a win in a very grindy fashion tonight. But more than anything else, Burrow needs to keep getting healthier and, and needs to avoid setbacks. That's going to determine this season for the Bengals in the long run. Stay up to date on the Cincinnati Bengals by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Bengals on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Coming up, should the New York Jets trade for Kirk Cousins? Jets have been without Aaron Rodgers since 75 seconds into their first game of the year after a few weeks of poor performances by Zach Wilson, which is to say 
performances by Zach Wilson, could they look to add a different NFC North quarterback? So here's the problem with trading Kirk Cousins to the Jets. What's up, everybody? It's Luke Braun from Locked On Vikings. And a lot of people have asked me about trading Kirk Cousins to the New York Jets. Hey, look, we're 0-3. Season's over. Just pack it in and try to get something for Kirk Cousins. And I understand the sentiment. I absolutely do. There's two things that really, really put a damper on this. I don't think it's plausible. And I also don't think the Vikings would do it. Um, for one, the Jets' first and second round picks are not available to be traded. They cannot be allowed to be traded because their Aaron Rodgers trade is not finalized. And because it's a conditional pick, both of those picks are involved in that. So you may not trade the first and second round pick of the New York Jets. So you have to take like a first two years from now or like a third round pick or something like that. And it gets really hard to put a trade package together. But let's say you overcome that and you say, all right, yeah, we'll do a first and a second in 25 and a player or something like that. Cousins has a no tra trade clause that he would have to waive. And he's not going to waive that to go to a team that isn't going to sign him to a long term deal. The Jets already have Aaron Rodgers under contract. He's going to be the quarterback when he's healthy again, assuming he doesn't retire, but they're not going to go sign another quarterback to a long-term contract. Cousins knows this, and he ain't going to say yes, and plus the Vikings just aren't going to pack it in and quit like so many fans seem to want to. Uh, for more answers to all of your questions, you can find me on the Locked On Vikings podcast, wherever you find your favorite shows. Certainly the Jets would love to upgrade a quarterback, even though Robert Sala continues, and perhaps perplexingly continues, to support Wilson as this team's quarterback. They could make a trade or try to make a trade for someone like Jacoby Brissett. That would make them better. I don't know why that doesn't seem to be on the table. Maybe they think a bigger fish will shake loose. Maybe they think the Rams will lose enough games that Matthew Stafford could become an option. The problem with any of these is they're committed to Aaron Rodgers. And if Rodgers has said, hey, I want to play next year, the Jets would have to give up significant capital that they don't really have to bring in a quarterback they can't really afford for one year to win a Super Bowl that was supposed to be Aaron Rodgers' Super Bowl. Maybe this is what happens when you give the power to a 40-year-old quarterback He's not a GM, and he doesn't have the same desires, goals as the team. This is going to get more complicated before it gets less complicated, I'm telling you. And finally, Denver Broncos head coach Sean Payton said the film from Sunday's 70-20 to loss to the Miami Dolphins was tough to watch. And it's interesting that he would describe it that way because for many NFL fans, it was one of the greatest games they've ever witnessed. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Now go find your favorite team's Locked On podcast and make them your second listen. Coming up on the next Locked On Sports today, which undefeated NFL team will be the next to fall? So at least until tomorrow, stay Locked On Sports today. Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. For more episodes of Locked On Sports today, go to our video on demand. Click on sports at the top of your screen. There you'll find past episodes of Locked On Sports today, plus other Locked On shows on demand.